Hello everyone. In this section, we will learn how to make program C code for Atmega328 to toggle the status of the three LEDs according to the input from a button switch. Also, we will consider solutions of the problem so-called switch bounce. As usually, we will assemble the electrical circuit on base of the Atmega328 to check the work of program code. Open the file main C of new C executable project in the main source editor area of Itmel Studio. Type the code of program. The first few lines we have some compiler defines. FCPU defines the clock frequency in Hertz and is common in programs using the Ever LIBC library. In this case it is used by the delay routines to determine how to calculate time delays. The first include file is part of every LIBC and will be used in pretty much any AVR project you work on. This file will determine the CPU you are using, which is why you specify the part when compiling, and in turn include the appropriate input-output definition header for the chip we're using. It simply defines the constants for all your pins, ports, special registers, etc. This library contains some routines for short delays. The function we'll be using, is delay ms. We use defines to declare our button and LEDs ports and pins. Using the defined statements like this allows us to only need to modify three easy to find lines if we move the LED to a different input output pin or use a different AVR. The final two defined statements set up times, in millisecond, to debounce the switch and the time to wait before allowing another press of the button. The debounce time needs to be adjusted to the time it takes the switch to go from a digital high to a digital low after all the bouncing. The bounce behavior will differ from switch to switch, but 20-30 milliseconds is typically quite sufficient. This function is called just once in the beginning of our program to initialize input-output pins that we will be using. For the button, we will be using the port and pin registers for writing and reading. With AVRs, we read the pin using its pinks register and we write to a pin using its port X register. We need to write to the button register to enable the pull-ups. For the LED we only need to use the port register to write to, however, we also need the data direction register as the input-output pins are set up as inputs by default. First, we are setting the LED's input-output pins as an output using its data direction register. Next, explicitly set the button pin as an input. Next, the port B pins is set high, 5V, to turn it on. The output pins is initially high, and since our LED is wired active high, it will be turned on unless we explicitly turn it off. And finally, we enable the internal pull-off resistor on the input pin we're using for our button. This is done simply by outputting a 1 to the port. When configured as an input, doing so results in enabling pull-ups and when configured as an output, doing so would simply output a high voltage. This function returns a boolean value indicating whether or not the button was pressed. This is the block of code which is continually being executed in the infinite loop and thus is polling the state of the button. This is also where we debounce the switch. Now, 
Remember that when we press the switch, the input-output pin is pulled to ground. Thus, we're waiting for the pin to go low. We do so by checking if the bit is clear. If the bit is clear, indicating that the button is depressed, we first delay for the amount of time defined by to bounce time which is 25 milliseconds and then check the state of the button again. If the button is depressed after the 25 milliseconds then the switch is considered to be debounced and ready to trigger an event and so we return 1 to our calling routine. If the button is not depressed, we return 0 to our calling routine. Our main routine. The main function is unique and set apart from all other functions. Every C program must have exactly one main function. Main is where the AVR starts executing your code when the power first goes on, so it's the entry point of the program. Call of the function to initialize input output pins being used. infinite loop where our program runs. When button state returns 1 indicating that the button was pressed and the bounced, then toggling the current status of LEDs in turn according to the NLED parameter. These statements use C bitwise operators. This time it's using the exclusive OR operator. When you XOR the port with the bit value of the bit you want to toggle, that one bit is changed without affecting the other bits. So now, when you run this program, you should be able to press the push button to LEDs are toggling. Due to our delay defined by lock input time, you can press and hold the button which will cause the LEDs to turn off and on at a consistent rate, little more than every 275 milliseconds. Programming is complete. Next step is building the project and programming hex file into the microcontroller using the Everdude program. OK. Now, the microcontroller works in accordance with the instructions of our program. Let's check it out. Connect components in accordance with schematic diagram. In addition to software switch debouncing we can use hardware switch debouncing technique. The basic idea behind such technique is to use a capacitor to filter out quick changes in the switch signal. What value capacitor should be select? This will ultimately depend on how poorly the button performs regarding this particular problem. Some buttons can display a tremendous bouncing behavior, yet others will have very little. A low capacitor value like 1 nanofarads will react very quickly, with little or no effect on the bouncing. 
Conversely, a higher capacitor value such as 220 nanofarads, which is still pretty small in terms of capacitors, will provide a slow transition from the starting to the ending voltage, 5V to 0V. The transition seen with the 220 nanofarads capacity is still pretty fast in a real-world sense however, and thus can be used on poorly performing buttons. Thank you for watching. More videos coming soon. Subscribe and ring the notification bell never to miss a new video.